City dwellers often long for nature getaways, places where they can see animals in their natural habitat and breathe some fresh air. However, this can sometimes come at a cost to the environment, especially when inconsiderate visitors leave their waste in nature. Now, researchers are finding microplastics in the bodies of all manner of wildlife, and they are already seeing the impact this is having on animal breeding. Conservationists hope the issue can be tackled before it's too late. Members of Greenpeace Taiwan and Formosan Wild Sand Conservation Science Center set off into the mountain together. They're headed for Ushan National Park's Lulin Shan Trail. The mountain here is more than 2,800 meters above sea level. Their goal is to collect samples of animal feces for analysis. Their main focus is protected animals, such as the yellow-throated marten and the Formosan samba deer. Each animal has different habits that affect how their excrement is distributed. For example, samba deer defecate while walking, and they produce lots of excrement. It can be seen everywhere along the trail. By collecting samples from different animals, we are better able to understand the general situation. We try as best we can to get fresh samples. However, yellow-throated martens are small animals and they produce less bodily waste. The researchers need to search carefully. Martens use feces to mark their territory, and they tend to leave it in high places so that the scent will travel far. Knowing this, the researchers were able to find a sample on top of a large rock. To prevent contamination of the sample, they put on rubber gloves before retrieving it. They wrap the sample in aluminium foil and record the location it was retrieved from using GPS. In a bid to better understand the effects of microplastics on wild animals, Greenpeace is working with 14 research teams to collect fecal samples from five species of protected animals in different habitats. We will get a sample from here because sandbar deer stand like this when they drink water. They are likely to drink surface water from here, close to the edge of the pond. After a year of research in the wild, the group has collected over 100 samples of feces, as well as 60 liters of water. The samples were sent to a lab for testing. In the water samples that we collected, we are likely to find algae and plankton, neither of which we need. We clear all that out with hydrogen peroxide, and then we're left with the microplastics we're looking for. Nile red dye is then added to the sample so that microplastics show up under fluorescent light. The analysis showed that all five protected animal species had microplastics in their feces, with the greatest quantity being found in the yellow-throated marten samples. The yellow-throated marten eats smaller animals in the food chain as it is a carnivore. So being higher up in the food chain, it eats rodents, birds, and insects like bees. When it eats these creatures, for example, when it eats rodents, it's possible the animal it eats have microplastics in their bodies, so these will accumulate in the marten. When it comes to microplastics, there are several problems. One is the toxicity of the material itself. Another is that the longest it's in the body, the greater the damage it can do. While collecting water samples, the team discovered that even 3,300 meters above sea level at Jiaming Lake, traces of microplastics could be found. A 150-kilogram adult samba deer drinks roughly 4 liters of water per day, which will result in consuming 80 pieces of microplastics daily. 
with wild animals eating plastic, will this come back to haunt humans? The results are demonstrative of one thing. The terrestrial ecosystem in Taiwan is already fraught with effects of plastics and microplastics. This is research sponsored by the Yushan National Park Office. It's easy to see that yellow-throated marns eat the trash park visitors discard on the trail. When they find the trash, they tear it open with their teeth and swallow pieces of it. Trash ends up in the park through atmospheric phenomena, rain and soil pollution, and of course through human activity. Yushan gets lots of visitors, and the Tataka Trail alone sees 500,000 to 700,000 hikers annually. The trash they produce is astonishing. In 2017, visitors to the park produced 50 tons of waste. Since then, at Takata Trail, the amount of annual waste has been slowly declining and is now about 10 tons. That's a decrease of roughly 40 to 50 percent. Getting garbage down from the mountain is not easy. A garbage truck with a capacity of 500 kilograms collects the waste weekly and takes it to a transfer station at Ali Shan. However, only by reducing waste at the source can the issue be properly managed. The park's office has been striving to reduce waste and to prevent animals from foraging in the bins. It has installed bear-proof waste bins and metal fittings over compost bins. Before we used these bins, we would use personal shopping carts, but the animals would tip them over. If you want to keep out wild animals, you need to use bins like these. In the forest, smart, opportunistic animals abound. The reporters caught a glimpse of such a creature when a yellow-throated marten appeared on top of a waste bin. Yellow-throated martens are simply opportunistic. There is no shortage of this kind of animal in a national park. Monkeys are the same, and there are lots of black bears in the park area. That's why we implore park visitors to avoid leaving waste behind. Microplastics have an impact on living things. From the mountains to the sea, from the wildlife in the forest to the fish and shellfish of the ocean, and even humans, nobody can escape the impact of plastic waste. Nanoplastics will get into our organic tissue. They invade our circulatory system and even get into human placentas, where they impact our offspring. This is Academia Sinica's Biodiversity Research Center. In 2022, the center established a plastics-free lab. From the clothes that the researchers wear to the desks and walls in the lab, all must be plastics-free in order to prevent environmental contamination of test results. These researchers are running tests on white shrimp and clams to see how much plastic is in the seafood we eat. One type we see here is red fibrous microplastics. Another is white granular microplastics. White shrimp have the plastics in their intestines and in their heads. So if we remove these before eating the shrimp, our consumption of microplastics can be greatly reduced. The lab found the greatest concentration of microplastics in the shrimp's heads and advised against eating that part of the shrimp. When it comes to clams, some of the microplastics they contain is expelled when they spit sand out of their shells. In another study, researchers examined the barnacles that attach themselves to rocks and sea turtles. When barnacles stretch out their feeding legs to catch food, they also end up catching microplastics. 
The researchers looked at both adult and barnacle larvae. The white dots moving on the petri dish are larvae that are only five days old. The researchers discovered that barnacles that eat microplastics for a long period of time won't be affected by the plastics themselves, but their offspring have tripled the mortality rate. The research on the subject was published in 2020 by academic journal Environmental Pollution. If the offspring that barnacles produce die off more easily, it will be harder for the population of the species to grow. Over the long term, the entire marine ecosystem will be affected. In the mountains, the sea and on land, plastic is found everywhere. The need to reduce it at the source is urgent. In the short term, we could possibly start within a limited area, such as a conservation area, a recreational area, a national park, or some other area where animals are usually found. We can start by reducing the amount of single-use plastic in use at the stores or vendors in these areas. Some have said that the waste you discard today will end up on your plate tomorrow. Once a pure natural refuge, today our forests and beaches are becoming landfills. If we hope to protect wildlife and our own food supply, we need to cut plastic out of our lives before it's too late.